Shrewd yet eccentric, Cambodia's former king Norodom Sihanouk was both an independence hero and a self-described naughty boy. In 1941, the French placed him on the throne aged 18, but he wasn't the pliant monarch the colonial power had hoped for. Twelve years later, he gained independence for Cambodia, but then abdicated in favour of his father to pursue a career in politics. He had a fixation about being the leader of a new country emerging from the third world, emerging from a dark history. Sihanouk served as prime minister six times before becoming head of state in 1960. Cambodia enjoyed a decade of stability, but there's an often forgotten, darker side to this period under Sihanouk, who relied on his ruthless secret police to quash opponents. I think people look back on the period to the extent those who lived through it, uh, the period of Sihanouk being in power, uh, look at it as a golden age uh, without very much reflection on the deeper, darker aspects of the period when he was in power, um, when uh, it was uh, very dangerous to say anything critical of him. After a US-backed coup in 1970, Sihanouk joined the communist guerrillas who would later become the notorious Khmer Rouge. They took power in 1975, and in just four years, up to two million people were executed or died from starvation, overwork or torture. The Khmer Rouge turned on Sihanouk, keeping him under house arrest. When the regime crumbled, he fled abroad before reascending the throne in 1993. Ill health led to a second abdication 11 years later. The throne passed to his son Siamoni, but the golden age of Cambodia's royalty was over. The whole role of monarchy now is much less important for the younger generation. Sihanouk had a playboy reputation. He married six times and fathered 14 children. He tried his hand as a filmmaker, poet and composer. But above all, he was a survivor whose life mirrors his country's turbulent history.